welcome my lovely people to this lovely Sunday at 10 a.m. So glad you're able to tune in with us. Again, as we're tuning in, we're going to be in lovely worship. We're going to have a lovely sermon and we want you to stay connected. Please follow us on our social media, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram at CCL Hoxton or CCL Nemo. We don't want you to just keep this information to yourself. We don't want you just to keep God's grace and God's goodness to yourself. So, why don't you tell a friend to tell a friend? Share the link on the website every Sunday at 10 a.m. As you're sharing the link with your friends, as you're sharing the link with your loved ones, we don't want you to stop there. Every day during the week, we have our online group. So Monday to Friday, we have our online group. And on Saturday, we have a Bible study with Kwame at 12 p.m. So we want you to be encouraged. We want you to grow together. We want you to be a part of this community. After the service is over, we want you to rejoice on our social media. So tag us at CCL at home. Hashtag CCL at home. Tag us what you're doing, how you felt during the sermon, even doing a little video of yourself just to explain what the message done for you. It will not only encourage us, but encourage the community that we have. So I'll see you all next week.
God of creation there at the start before the beginning of time with no point of reference you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light and as you speak
where you lost your life so I could find it. If you left the grave behind you, so I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part of the sign you won't go. You would get a hundred billion times But one measure could amount to your desire You're the one who never leaves the world behind Thought by now they'd fall, but you have never felt me there. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battle's won. For you have never. Still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You'll never fail me.
still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my cup. Christian community of London welcomes you and we hope that you're enjoying this time at home with your family. Thank you for connecting with us. Here are this week's announcements. The new term for Bible and Coffee is about to begin. If you are interested in studying any of our Bible courses with us, go and register in our webpage at www.cclnuma.org. During this difficult time that is full of uncertainty, as an organisation, the Christian Community of London created an initiative to help the growing need in the City of London. Recognising the importance of offering social aid to all those that need it. From the beginning of the state of emergency, our project Social Transformation was distributed into point areas around London, taking into account the volunteers that live in different boroughs and taking the initiative to work in this way to cover the need in a more effective way. After receiving the information through the form in our website and through referrals from other organisations, we were able to attend to more than 200 families in the City of London, thanks to the help of each volunteer and the donation of Love Your Neighbour. We encountered families in different situations, not only with the need of food, but also a friendly chat. This made us realise the importance of keeping in touch and not only stretching out our hands to help, but also opening our ears to listen. The work that was done was extremely broad and we counted on a group of volunteers that from the first point of contact with each person, they have done an excellent job. Volunteers that decided to leave their homes and help the people in need. Thanks to each one, we were able to distribute the aid on time and they always had a smile on their face. To give your tithes and your offerings, you can do so in the following way. Online, visiting our webpage, clicking on the button that says donate, through the phone, calling the number on screen, and for bank transfers, you can call the church office. We thank each and every one of you for your donations during this time. We as a church would love to pray for you. If you have any prayer requests, get in contact with us and together we will see the hand of God move in a supernatural way. For us, it's a pleasure to have you connected. We hope you enjoy the service. Hi, thank you all for joining us today. Hope you guys are blessed to be here on Church Online. We want to remind you guys that you can send us an emoji or hi through the chats. Make sure just let us know you're here. How about you just send an emoji right now to say hi to us. Remember, we have hosts in the chat that are able to answer any questions. Or if you have any prayer requests, please leave a message in the chat so that we can connect with you. Also, remember to tag us at CCL Numa, at CCL Hoxton, all your pictures and all your Instagram images that you'll be doing during out the service, please do share them with us so that we can share the message of Christ of what God's doing through our online church experience. To continue, we've been sharing about the power of prayer. We've been sharing about the power of the word and we've been sharing about power of worship. And then last week was about the power of the Holy Spirit. And now I want to close it up this week with the power of community. So how about if you've got your Bibles, I don't know if you've got a tablet, if you've got your phone there, or you've got your physical Bible there with you, how about we open our Bibles in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 to 25. We're just going to read a couple of verses there. And it says like this, Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. 
Let us think of ways to motivate, stir up, other versions say, one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. How about we pray? Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here together. We thank you, God, for allowing us to be able to do church online through these means, God. And for every listener, Lord, today, God, just let them be receiving the word with an open heart. Thank you for all our friends and family that are joining us here this morning. I pray, God, that this word can fulfill its plan and purpose to reach many hearts and encourage us and teach us, Lord, Father, what your word wants to teach us this morning. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, Lord, take control of this word word today we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus we all say amen great guys I don't know if any of you have heard about the five love languages an author called Gary Chapman maybe you've read the book have you read it put us a comment in the in the chat if you have read it just lift up your hands and maybe just now in the comments how about you tell us which love language you are now there's five love languages for those who don't know there is physical touch quality time gifts, acts of service, and words of affirmation. If you know which one you are, how about you just put them there in the chat? We'd love to just share and engage in this message today. Well, just to let you know, my one for the last 12 years, I always felt it was gifts and acts of service. This year has been a very different year for me because my birthday was during this lockdown. And so it was the very first time I have a birthday that's very different, not being able to share with other people, And usually, you know, it would be the desire of having gifts. Uh, Maybe my wife would surprise me by buying me something or taking me somewhere. But obviously, it couldn't happen as we wanted. But it wasn't that so much that what I wanted it to. I felt like an urge that I wanted this year words and physical touch. I really wanted someone just to just tell me happy birthday and send me words. And, And it's like until everything else was removed and I was able to see that I really needed words for encouragement and that tends to happen because maybe in the busyness of life we don't realize the importance of words of encouragements and friendships and relationships and community so my wife this year she said you know she didn't say anything for most of the day when it was my birthday she gave me my kiss my hug But then I asked her, I said, are you not going to put anything online? Are you not going to send me a message like you usually do? She was very surprised. She goes, I thought you didn't need that. I says, but I said to her, I think I do now. Maybe I'm getting older or maybe just the sense that things around me are changing and I'm really learning to appreciate the important things. So I see some of you put on the chat your love language and that's good. I believe community relationships go together. And today I want to talk about the power of community. What does the word community mean? Well, first of all, community comes from two words. It comes from common and unity, to unify. Something that unifies us with a com- something that's common. A common unity that brings us together. Even though right now we can't physically come into community, but verbally we can have community. And that's powerful because words have power, right? The Bible says in Colossians 4, 6, this says, let your conversation always be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. That's really a powerful word there. Let our words be attractive, full of grace. And so that people, we can have the right response for people, for everyone. I don't know how about about you, but I think in this time, we can't get physical community right now happening due to the, the lockdown and due to the COVID that's happening right now across the world. But what we can have is verbal community, sharing, talking, listening. All those things are important. And so how important are our conversations to be filled with grace? How important is it for them to be attractive for people? Let our words be attractive. Let them attract, not, not detach people. <laughs> Let them be able to bring them closer and that we can have the right response. And I love this as we look at the book of Hebrews, the writer here is bringing encouragement that they should hold tight to the truth. Hold tight to the truth, it says. These new believers were living in struggling times. Faith was being challenged. 
Discouragement was increasing and they needed a renewed confidence in the greatness of Jesus. Familiar, isn't it, to what we're maybe going through right now and maybe some of you feel like that? Well, the key word is this, hold tightly, hold tightly. And this should be in all our notes, a reminder to hold tight. I was just thinking about that earlier. And I was just thinking when we go on a roller coaster, many of you will hold tight. Well, I do. You hold tight. Until it gets to a point that when we're so confident of the roller coaster, we're confident that the ride is safe, what would we do? We will lift up our hands. And even though we are not really in control, but we hold tight, knowing that we're going to eventually reach our final destination. Well, it's the same thing right now. Who are you holding on tight to? What you hold on to tight to now will determine how you will be able to enjoy the next season. Maybe you'll be lifting up your hands and you won't have to hold tight no more. But meanwhile, God is encouraging us, hold tight, hold tight. And what he was saying here in Hebrews is that to trust in his faithfulness, not ours. Then he goes on to say a key verse here in the following verse. He says, let us think of ways to motivate one another. Discouragement made them avoid community. And at the very time they needed it the most, many times discouragement is what actually doesn't allow us to have community. When we're discouraged, sometimes we're the ones that don't want to, we want to be in isolation. We don't want no one to bother us. We don't want anyone to call us, text us. We want to be alone. Discouragement many times is what stops us from experiencing the community of fellowship, the community of believers. And it it says here that let us think of ways to motivate one another. We need that wake up call maybe. And many times we'll find it in the fellowship of community. See, Jesus meets us in one another to stir up love and good work. Have you noticed that? That God uses us. He uses his children to reveal his love. We are his vessels, his instruments. And I think talking about an instrument as in the musical instrument, an instrument plays best when someone is playing it. Today, obviously, there's instruments that play itself, but I think a classical instrument is played best when someone is playing it. So here's a question. How do you sound? Who's playing the instrument of your life? And I think this is something for us to kind of evaluate. Am I really being an instrument for God? Am I allowing him to work in me and through me? That's what he wants to do in this time. And have you noticed what the word says there in Hebrew? In Hebrews, it says, encourage one another. He didn't say the leader or the pastor directing them, the rest of the people what to do, but it was an instruction to the whole body of Christ. Example, in this time, we need words of encouragement and the words of encouragement can go a long way. Words of encouragement will go far in this time. We as leaders and pastors are leading the community. We need more than ever encouragement. We need a motivation because we're not immune to trials and tribulations. In this time and season, maybe God's calling you to be an encourager for those people that have been serving you, for those who love you, those who care for you. Maybe it's a good time for you to to reach out to someone that maybe you haven't heard of lately. Just a message or a text. And honor goes both ways, guys. We honor because we've been honored to be called children of God through Christ Jesus. And it's not about that I have to honor, but it's about that I get to honor. So in the same way, I get to stir up love and do good works. Listen, I don't have to wait to be encouraged by someone to encourage someone. (laughs) I don't need to wait. I can encourage someone whenever. Stir up was the word used here in Hebrews. And that word in the Greek translation is a very strong word, stir up. Stir up was used in the Bible in good actions and in bad actions. You see that they would stir up, the people would stir up when they came against Jesus, against the believers, when they came against Moses. Many times that stirring up was actually to do action, to take 
an action or intention of doing something. But in this context of the word in Hebrews, he's saying to stir up, to encourage with love and works. And this is what, this is what it means for us to do something in action, to do something, not just to stir up in our hearts and feel compassion or, or feel moved, but to do something about it. When we read Hebrews 10.25, then here it says, And let us not neglect our meeting together, as many do, as some people do, other versions will say. Some versions say, not forsaking assembling of ourselves, meeting up, or avoiding worshipping together. Let us not neglect it. You know, forsaking fellowship is definitely a sure way to give place to discouragement. You know, some people only connect to church when they need it, maybe every so often at a time. But our, our motivation for fellowship must be to obey God and to give to others. Just as we receive by grace, we give by grace. We can and should gather with believers to encourage someone who needs to stand strong against this tide of discouragement. See, discouragement can come at you at any time. Doesn't, you don't have to be someone who's been in church for many, many years or long or short time of years in church or short time. And discouragement can happen to all of us. So a message, a text, a voice note, a verse to someone, can someone to someone can be a reminder of God's love and grace. It could be that spiritual energy boost. It can be that confirmation in, in this season. It can be that voice in the desert. It can be the hope that they've been praying for to come. Jesus knew the importance of community. Remember, he instructed them that after the resurrection to remain together until the counselor came, the Holy Spirit. And before that, he told them to love one another so that people will know that you are my disciples. You know, I said this once. I believe you can go far fast alone but you can go further together you can go fast alone but you can go further together meaning that we can extend God's kingdom together when we work together as a community we can extend the church we can build his church and I'm not talking about the building I'm talking about the people knowing God's love and and his grace across this city and even across this nation we grow together in community. As we are a church, not, not gathering in buildings, we can still gather here online. Listen to me. Then. The doors of the building may be closed, but the doors to our hearts should remain open to be the church. Acts chapter 2 verse 46 says this. They worship together at the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. In this time, maybe we can't connect physically, but we can connect verbally, as I said before. Maybe it's time and it's moving us from sitting in rows to start sitting in groups, creating circles, an opportunity for us to build one another, protect one another and encourage one another. So what does a home group of community group look like? Or what do they do? Well, first thing what it does is it reminds us that I'm not in this journey alone. Other people need to hear your story. You know, I've always said many people can maybe debate or question your, your knowledge and understanding of the Bible. But no one can question your testimony. No one can question your story because it's your story. And it's your experience. It's your encounter. It's your steps of faith that you've had and a group is a place where we can share people like people that are real not just being right as some leaders say being real is not being rude but being able to relate and connect see it's nothing wrong with being a little bit vulnerable and sharing because I want you to notice it's not a sign of weakness but many times that's a sign of freedom it helps us to connect with other people and connect with their hearts. We learn from others. We can learn from others in this time. Every time we come together in these community groups, we're learning from one another. 
So what happens in these groups? Well, the last four weeks of teachings, we've been touching on a point that's different. And each one of those points that we've been talking about happens in those groups. For example, we pray in a group. James 5.16 says this, Confess your sins to each other, pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. What J James is teaching here is a sense of accountability, not of judgment, but of support. Because when I confess my sins to someone and then it says I pray for them, it's because I want someone to pray and support me. When we confess our sins to one another, it's not to judge. It's to bring support and to do what we have best. In the word it says that the prayer of the righteous can do much, meaning it has power. And it should lead us to pray for one another. Remember, prayer is relationship. Remember, prayer doesn't change God. Prayer changes me. So when I pray, for, for example, it's my humble recognition of a greater power and love that is available to hear my call. That's what prayer is for me personally. And I, will, and I love in this time through this month and last month, I've been reading a lot of Psalms. It's given me an idea of what prayer is because I see a King David, a young man, a young king, a man of authority, a man of position, how even though with everything he has, everything under his command and all the authority he has, he recognizes that he needs relationship with God. He needs a prayer life. And if you read through the Psalms, you see moments of desperation. You see moments of anger. You see moments of frustration. You see moments of praise and of joy. And you can learn so much how to pray. But I love this Psalm, Psalm 145, 18. The Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call, it, call on him in truth. Another thing that happens in groups, we share the word. Sharing is hearing and also doing. Remember, James 1, 2, 2 says, be doers of the word and not just hearers only. Satan doesn't care that you, have, you study the Bible and have knowledge as long as you don't apply it into your life. He doesn't care how much you know, but what does bother him is when you start to live it, when you live the word, when you start to apply the word. So application is the key here. And in the group communities and in the groups that we have, it's a great place to hear it, share it, and take it with us into our daily lives. And we get to share it with others. How you approach the Bible will determine how much you will get out of it. How you approach it will determine how much you get out of it. When you're faced with questions of what's true and what's right in life, go to the Bible expecting to meet God there. You'll find it's a book like no other. You can meet God in that place. You want to know God? Get into his word. You want to know his character? Get into his word. Another thing that happens on these groups, we worship. Not long ago, we had a guest speaker from Guatemala, a friend of the church, and he shared about the power of worship. See, we sing songs of praise to God, not for what he gives, but for who he is. When I'm worshiping God, I'm putting my worries aside and I'm trusting in my Lord. It's me surrendering and giving thanks to God. It's bringing an understanding and the meaning of what it means to say to worship in spirit and in truth. We were created for worship and the truth of Jesus is what allows us to do so. Another thing, what happens in these groups is that we allow the Holy Spirit to minister our hearts. John 14, 26 says this, But when the Father sends the Advocate, some versions say the Comforter, as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. See, the Holy Spirit is what makes these community groups different. Without the Spirit of God, it will not bring about the purpose of God's heart to heal, to fill, and to transform lives. This is community. This is fellowship. And just to finish up, I want to give you four things that you need to know about community. Number one, community encourages me. Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens iron. 
Though we are saved from sin, when we believe in Christ, we are given a task of ongoing and growing in our faith. In community, it helps us mature in faith so that we can not easily be swayed and shaken by temptations or from worldly concerns. See, the more I grow in faith, the more I am rooted and grounded in my convictions so that when trials come and tests come, I stand firm. I can be standing strong in faith. Community encourages me to grow in my faith. Hearing the journey of faith encourages me to believe that God is working not just in me, but in all who believe in the name of Jesus. Second thing, second point, community should be fun. Take advantage that if we're doing online groups, be creative or just have fun. Remember, the Bible says something really clear in Psalm 133, that it's pleasant and how enjoyable it is when the brothers are in unity. Have fun about it. Don't be boring about it. Maybe you can create different themes for your groups, create a theme to, to what your meeting is about. Whatever it is, have fun about it. And let's enjoy our community. It's good for your soul. It's good for your heart. Um, and number three, community attracts the Holy Spirit. Remember that when two or more are gathered in his name, he is there. He is present. And I believe community attracts him because when we come together in faith, his presence is there. Every time we want to have fellowship, his spirit is available for us. And number four, the last one, community is life giving and essential to following Christ. It can be hard for some for us to commit to community, especially if we're guarded and prefer solitude. But community is God's desire for us and a sign of a mature faith. Because at the end of the day, when we grow in relationships with others, we're growing in relationship with him. I love this quote from a theologian. He says, when joy and prayer are married, the firstborn child is gratitude. When joy and prayer are married, our, the first child is gratitude. See, when we have joy and we join our prayer relationship with God together, we are always going to be someone who is grateful. And if we're grateful for those fellowship that we have with brothers and sisters in Christ, then we're going to be able to grow in this time. We're going to be able to know God in a different level. Maybe you said, but pastor, I've tried this. I've tried to connect into church. I've tried to do this before. And it's easy as well to see the flaws. You look at the flaws of the church. You look at, you look at imperfections, imperfections. But I'll be honest with you. There is no perfect church. We're all imperfect people seeking a perfect savior. And maybe you say, well, is there not enough prayer, not enough theological teaching, not enough loving. They're not doing enough. Listen, Matthew chapter seven, verse three says, and why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? It's to say Jesus was saying it's so easy to look and criticize and look at the mistakes of others. But the first judgment maybe needs to come onto yourself to bring change. I think sometimes God is telling us through this message that we need to rise up and be the church. Think of the achievements that you're obtaining in this time. Before the crisis, we had challenges and we thought maybe oh, I'm never going to get through this. But now you have. And now this is a new season and a new challenge. But let me tell you something. Growth is never obtained without a challenge of character, without a challenge of willingness and determination. Just like precious stones are created, diamonds require pressure to be made. Gold requires fire to be to refine it. It's being refined by fire. And precious stones require deep digging to find. Maybe this is the time that God has to do a work in our hearts to show how precious you are and valuable you are for his community, for his church. If you're willing to give community a chance, you will see that you won't only just grow, but you will help others grow too. You want to see a better church? I believe he wants to see a better you first. In this time, I've learned there are things we just can't control, but what I can control is the circle and the community that surrounds me. So let community and the fellowship of believers be part of your journey in this time. I wanna encourage you today to think about that. 
to think about, Lord, have I really given community a chance? Have I put my part to share, to talk, to pray, to worship, and to believe that the Holy Spirit can do something? I want to encourage you today, and I want to pray for you. So there where you are, how about you just close your eyes? And maybe for you, you're just coming back to church. Maybe you've been someone that has been jumping or coming, going from church. But I want to tell you something just to think about. God never dated the church. He said he married it. He called us his bride. And so much he loves us that he even died for the church. You won't find a perfect church, but you will find a perfect savior in this church. And that was willing to die for you and for me so that we can live a life full of love and have fellowship within community. So there where you are, I want to pray for you. Maybe you want to reconcile your life with God and just come back to him. There where you are, I want to do a prayer. And I would ask, love for you to just repeat this prayer with me. Just say this, Lord Jesus, today I've listened to your word and I've understood that I've been far away from you. I see God that I understand that you died for our sins and you died for the church so that we can have community and we can have fellowship with you. Father, today I pray to come into my heart and make me your child. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you did that prayer for the first time, I wanna welcome you to this community and I wanna encourage you to get connected online, to try and find a group. If you're in the chat right now and it was your first time and you did that prayer, lift up your hand and say, I did that. And if you want a group, lift up your hand and emoji even, just say, I would love to join a group. We have hosts online and leaders there that would love to connect with you and they will take your details and they'll find you an online group in this time so that you can have community and you can be part of this growing church to bless people. I wanna encourage you. So do that right now. Just talk in the chat right now, lift up your emoji hands and let them just reach out to you. You can also find more information through our website or you can just comment right now and say, I did that prayer and we would just love to connect with you. For everyone else today, I just wanna pray for you. Thank you for believing in community, believing what the word of God says. So let's just finish up with prayer. Let's just say, Father, we thank you for the church. We thank you because it's not about the buildings. It's about the people, God. And here, as we are here today, God, we can just come together in fellowship as brothers and sisters, God, and enjoy being the church and enjoy your presence through the Holy Spirit. Thank you for dying for us, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. God, we just pray, Lord, that throughout this season, God, that we can grow we can learn and that we can become better, Lord Father. And as after all this is over, God, that we can see a new day, that better days are coming, that your glory is gonna be seen across the land and to give you praise. Thank you, Jesus, for the church. I bless every family, every person watching today. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Thank you for joining us. We hope you guys can join us again next week on Church Online. We'll see you soon. God bless. Thank you for joining us in our stream today. Don't forget to connect with us during the week in our social media pages. If you need prayer, help in any way, or would like to give a donation, contact us through our webpage. Subscribe to our channels and we will see you next week.